Hello, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a new classroom. So first, you got to make sure you are on GitHub Classrooms. And so what we're going to do is click on the green button on the top, create a new classroom. Now, it'll let you create a classroom from any organization you currently have, but most likely um, you don't have an organization yet. And this is also what I would recommend is don't set up the organization first create the classroom, and then edit the organization later. So I'm going to create a new organization. Um, my, uh, uh, this doesn't really matter. Um, so I just usually do IGM, my name, the course, uh, and then the year, 2021, I don't know. Contact email, I'll put in my email. Um, I use a uh, personal because what uh, later on I'll do pro and uh, with personal account, you can have pro. So even though we're making it for an, inst um, an institution, I still say it's personal. So there we go, there's our organization. Then I click on it, create a classroom. I could edit the name there. Uh, here you can decide to add in any TAs or admins. Um, admins or owners, well, both of them are going to be as owners on the Git organization, but like admins or TAs would be uh, anyone that you want to have access to all of the repositories. So a grader, TA, if you're teaching a class with another professor, you can add them here. I'm just going to skip it for now. Don't have um, any of these learning management systems, but we will probably have a roster, but we'll come back and do this later and because um, we got to get the uh, CSV file from my courses. And there we go. That is the basic uh, classroom setup. Uh, we don't have any students because we haven't added them yet. I'm the only admin um, and there's no TAs because we also haven't added them and there are no assignments. But so let's jump in and update our my courses or our roster for my courses. So here I'm gonna just pick a random classroom. Now there might be another way to do this, but uh, to export out a CSV of all the students, but I haven't found one. So this seems a little weird, but we're gonna go into grades. Go to enter grades. and then click on export. So what we want to do is I just want to put in their username. Let's sort by uh, first name. I'm not going to include any of their grades, but I am going to include their first and last name. I'm going to add any graded items, and then I'm going to export to CSV. One thing you're going to want to do is after you download this is to actually open this CSV and edit it. So I'm going to go and do that now just in the text editor. So I'll be right back. So one thing I just noticed fun when doing this is no matter what you do, my courses always exports it out as um, username, last last name first name so what i ended up doing was creating a um, downloading it as an excel opening that up into google drive or excel itself change the columns around and then you have a in order uh, just because i like to have the students display so that the, um, it's going to read each line of that csv as a string for the student username so i like it to be first last and in parentheses um, 
their username. So if you want that formatting, I would suggest opening it into um, Excel and then editing those columns. Otherwise you have to do a lot of copy and paste. Well, anyways, I have a CSV that I just edited just for myself. So this is like the format I like of first, last, and then their username, because that's what's going to show up in their assignments. So if you open it up in Excel or in Google Doc, you can make those edits uh, and make it easier on, your, on yourself for um, getting this format. So I'm going to create a roster. Roster save. Now you can come back through and edit this. So um, if after add drop, there's more students, you can just grab that entire students list, put it here. If there are any duplicates, what it's going to do is, so if I try to add myself again, it's going to add a one to the end of it. So then you just kind of quickly go through and delete any duplicates. But if someone is already there, um, they were they stay linked. So you can see the unlinked ones and you can just delete any extra ones. So you don't have to worry about um, if the student was there from day one or was added um, after you first created the roster, which is really nice. All right, next thing you wanna do is probably set up some TAs. So what you want to do is first go into the organization and you're gonna to want to invite members. So this is all through GitHub. So you're gonna to want to get their GitHub username in order to add them as owners. Make sure that you add them as owners because they are go that way they can see all the, the repositories, all the private ones, and they will have read and write access to all of those repositories. So you can once uh, do that, you can add them and then you'll have to provide them this link. They'll click on the link and then it'll get them set up to um, join as a T or admin. Um, that way they can also see um, your assignments, the students. If you just add them as owners in the repository, they'll still be able to browse the, um, the organization for all its repositories and find them. Last thing you might want to do is make any changes to your um, classroom. Probably just uh, maybe rename it if you don't like the name. This is also where you can archive it at the end of the semester. Most of the settings are going to be in the organization because like I've said before, GitHub classrooms are just some fancy tools on top of a organization. So here I like to set a picture profile um, you can set up some URLs. I usually set the URL back to the My Courses, so that way they can, from GitHub, get to My Courses. And I also have links on my My Courses to the GitHub, so that way the students can back and forth regardless of where they start off. All right. Then the last thing that you want to do is to set up your organization as a pro account. So if you go under billing, you're currently under the free uh, plans, uh, but you can with GitHub Educations for Teachers package, you can get GitHub Teams for free. So I'll put this link in the toolbox because it's kind of buried in the GitHub um, Education site. But here you can see all your classrooms um, and it's easy to just say, okay, upgrade this repository. It's going to be a classroom. The, um, so it's submitted, it takes usually a day or two for them to approve it. And then once that's done, when you go to your organization, it's going to show it as uh, GitHub Teams uh, for free. So what's, what I like about this is it lets you have um, unlimited public or private repositories and those private repositories are allowed to have GitHub pages uh, because GitHub pages are public links that anyone can view. But by default or with the, the free plan, 
Um, only public repositories can have a public GitHub pages. So with GitHub Teams, you're allowed to have private repositories with public GitHub pages. So that way students can share the exported builds uh, because I'm doing stuff primarily in Unity. So people can share the builds of their games, but no one can view their source code. So code's private, the executable is public for people to um, view because that's what I'll use for testing primarily. And that is it. Um, I'm going to make later videos kind of showing some other things with assignments, but this is all you need to do in order to have a brand new classroom. Hope you enjoyed.